In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, and God, Amen. Today is the third Sunday of the Blessed Holy 50 Days of the Resurrection of the Feast, which we celebrate for 50 uh, days. <clears throat> uh, the theme of the 50 days, as we said before, is the resurrection, but also the heavenly life. Because when Christ rose, he uh, rose from the dead, took those who were in Hades, who were faithful and righteous and just, and believing in him, um, up to paradise. And the first week we, we spoke in this journey, we spoke of Christ who rose from the dead and then returned to his disciples and St. Thomas. Um, <clears throat> and last week we spoke of the goal in which uh, is to be united with the Lord, which happens through the Holy Communion, um, where he says, I am the bread of life. And this week we see a similar gospel that we read a month ago or so, uh, the Lord with the, the Samaritan woman. And the church selects this gospel during these days for two main reasons. One, because uh, he preaches to her about the resurrection and the true worship, um, the worship in spirit and truth. And secondly, because this happens at the well, and he signifies here the water of life, <clears throat> which refers to him, uh, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And so during these 50 days, we, um, we focus on our life with God. Just like in heaven, the main thing is rejoicing and living and worshiping and serving and uh, abiding in God. These 50 days give us a, a small taste of, of that heavenly life. <clears throat> um, but specifically, when we see the, the, the water, um, we know that the water especially in early generations or early civilizations, it's a source of life. Uh, people would, were not, even us, are not uh, able to live and to sustain life without, without it. <clears throat> so this reminds us of God. Without water, there's no food. Without food, there's no life. Without God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, we have no life. And the resurrection is a sign of this life. But even when you go into Scripture, the water is very prevalent, especially... Um, not only just in the Gospel according to St. John, which we focus on these 50 days, but even if you look at the beginning and the end of Scripture, you see water very prominent, right? Um, in Genesis, the, the main thing that is focused on actually in the first chapter is the water, right? Um, even the first couple of verses where it talks about um, there was darkness, right? The, 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 the world was void, and, but there was water. Right? In a sense, the, the world itself was baptized in, in water. <clears throat> and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. Um, <clears throat> and then uh, we see the description of paradise. And there's a river, in, in uh, actually four rivers in, in Genesis. And then when you fast forward to Revelation, the last three chapters, you also see water very prominent. Um, <clears throat> for example, in the last chapter of the Bible, Revelation chapter 22, it says, And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding from the throne of God uh, and of the Lamb. So when we see and read and, and think about water, it should remind us of God and baptism, <clears throat> as the fathers teach us. Um, but today we actually want to focus a little bit more about what the Lord says here to the Samaritan woman in verses 23 and 24. He says, The hour is coming and now is when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. Those who worship, for the Father is seeking such to worship him. God is spirit and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. So, uh, well, the first question we ask is, well, what is worship? Um, <clears throat> and uh, I like to dissect this word into two main parts, um, the, the proper thought or belief or faith, which means orthodox, actually, um, and the proper spirit or life or application, which I've said before, it's orthopraxy, right? So the proper doctrine, the proper faith, and the proper lifestyle, and the two go hand in hand. And that is what, as orthodox, we like to define as worship. Some people define worship as just prayer. Um, <clears throat> but even if you look at the word 
in, in Greek, it means, even St. Paul says, offer to God your, um, your, yourselves as a living sacrifice, which is your proper service or worship. So, so, so worship is not just prayer, but it's offering our whole self, offering our whole life, just like he offered himself for all of us. <clears throat> so the way we think and what we believe is, is intimately connected to the way we live. Um, and if you look at a person's lifestyle, you can deduce somewhat or a lot about what they believe to be true and proper and right, or lack thereof. Um, <clears throat> so like we said before, this is why in the church, we don't separate doctrine from worship or from prayer. Um, we don't separate the liturgy of the faithful from the liturgy of the word, right? The, right now we're ending which part of the liturgy? The liturgy of the word, right? So we say you have to come before the gospel. Why? Because we have to learn more about our heavenly bridegroom before we marry him, right? <clears throat> That's the whole purpose of engagement, right? It's to get to know the person that you're preparing to marry because this is the rest of your life with them, right? <clears throat> And even after you get married, part of the successful marital life is knowing your spouse and, and loving them the, the best way that you can and the way that they, they like to be loved. <laughs> um, <clears throat> we'll talk about that another time. But um, we can't separate the liturgy of the word from the liturgy of the faithful. We can't separate our theology from our worship. Um, and the two uh, go hand in hand. So that's why the Lord says we have to worship in spirit and in truth. So worship in truth is the, the, the person who knows God well. Um, because this is what heaven is like, right? This is the, the life that they may know you, the one true God. Um, <clears throat> and so what does the, the Lord say to the woman of today regarding worship? He says he actually rebukes her a little so that she can Look for the, the proper worship. He says, you worship what you do not know. He's talking not only to her, but to the Samaritans and to the people who don't believe in him um, or who will not believe in him. Um, but he says, we know what we worship. In a sense, the, the person who is close to God says, I know who I worship. Um, but sometimes we do or, or believe certain things that are not proper, and it comes out in our, in our actions. Um, as, as the Lord God rebukes the people um, in Isaiah says, these people draw to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. And, and as the epistle of today says um, that we should love one another, not in word or in tongue, but in deed and in truth. And that includes God. Um, so loving God is part of loving God is knowing him better. And part of knowing him better is learning. Um, <clears throat> that doesn't mean we have to go to seminary, but it's, it's good to learn the same things that are taught um, in seminary. So uh, going deeper into scripture, going deeper into the sacraments, going deeper into studying the things of, of God and of his church, this helps me not only in my theology, but in my, in my life, in my practice. <clears throat> um, and so this is... Um, for example, one uh, theologian said, true worship is not simply practicing rituals or singing hymns or recitation of prayers or fasting or offering the sacrifice, but above all, it's acknowledgement of God um, and knowing God and knowing that he is the lover of mankind. Um, <clears throat> so the Pharisees were stubborn in, in just sticking to the practice, sticking to the outward shell, um, <clears throat> but they, they didn't worship God in truth. They didn't know who God truly was. Um, and even, as we said before, uh, the, the early disciples in the gospel after the resurrection, they weren't sure. They didn't have this faith um, solidified in, in the resurrection, and that's why they couldn't see him and know him clearly until he revealed himself to them. Um, <clears throat> and the Pharisees themselves, they didn't know God, and he was standing with them face to face. Um, so the goal of the Orthodox faith is to reveal and to preserve who God is, um, not to invent or develop. We don't invent things, and uh, theology, and we don't develop things. It's the same faith. Um, but, but it is the way that God has revealed it to us, and he reveals it to each and every one of us, that the more we uh, 
attempt or offer ourselves to him so that he can reveal himself to us. So the true faith is revealed by the true life, and the true life is revealed by the true faith. <clears throat> like, for example, um, I think I've mentioned this before, but um, with Elijah the prophet and the, the, the pagan priests who did not believe in God. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> in the book of 1 Kings chapter 18, he says, if the Lord is God, follow him. But if it is Baal, the, the one that they were worshiping, um, uh, follow him. And, and then they said, so each group kind of had a contest, who is the real God? So how did it come about? The way they worshipped. So the 450 priests or so, they, they offered to Baal the way they worshipped. And Elijah did, he built an altar and he prayed. And how was the true God revealed? By the fire that came down um, from heaven. <clears throat> so this is not necessarily going to happen to each one of us when we pray, but the, the, the idea here is that the orthodoxy or the proper doctrine is revealed by the proper lifestyle and vice versa. Um, so, um, but for exa another example, St. Paul in the early church, um, when he was trying to explain why at that time they had the speaking in tongues from the Holy Spirit, <clears throat> the gift of the Holy Spirit, he said, this is a sign to the non-believers, the people who didn't believe in Christ, that Christianity was, was true, it was the true faith. So it was the outward reflection of the inner faith. Um, <clears throat> and so uh, worshiping in truth means that we have to learn. We have to try at, or, or offer ourselves and open our minds to learn more from God. Don't, don't say, I already understand the scripture. I already memorized this verse or this chapter. There's, we, ne we never stop learning. Um, <clears throat> and it, it's not just based on knowledge, like, um, like the knowledge of society, but there's, there's a wisdom here <laughs> because God is, again, revealing himself through his spirit. And that only happens with a person who is attempting with love and humility and faithfulness to, to abide by what God is trying to teach them. So, so there's a spiritual component here, and that's why I say we can't separate the, the truth from the spirit. <clears throat> and so uh, that comes to the second point, the worship in spirit. Um, Evagrius of Pontius, one early church father, said, if you are a theologian, you will truly pray. And if you pray truly, you are a theologian. So it's not about getting a degree by, by knowing God, but it's someone who prays in spirit and truth and worships in spirit and truth. <clears throat> so our hearts have to be involved in prayer. It's not just, okay, we have this outward form, we have this sacrament, we have this book that we follow, and, and that makes it prayer. Some people assume that because we're Orthodox, we say, if you want to pray, here's a guide. Um, but the guide is supposed to, to um, stimulate our hearts um, to, to be inflamed with the love of God. Um, <clears throat> so our hearts have to be involved in prayer. Um, it's not just a collection of words. Um, as, again, the, the scripture of today says, God is greater than our heart. Um, <clears throat> but we have to at least attempt for our hearts to be involved when we um, pray, either in the church or in our home. Um, so what does the spiritual prayer look like? Well, it's attached to the virtues, love, humility, purity, simplicity. It's God-centered, not um, me-centered, right? Um, it's not need-based, but it's God-based. Um, so if God is spirit, like the Lord says today, those who worship him must worship in spirit. Um, and what does that mean? <laughs> it's hard to explain because then we're, we're, we're explaining spiritual things and physical things, right? But um, even St. Paul says, we don't know what to pray for as we are. But the Holy Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings that cannot be uttered. So we just have to call and ask and, and um, search for his spirit to work inside us and, and to give him place to work inside of us. Um, if the door is open, he will come. But if our door is, if our heart is closed, <clears throat> he won't force himself upon us. <clears throat> um, so uh, another example, um, all the prayers and recitations and readings that we conducted through the Holy Week a few uh, weeks ago um, has power. 
We don't understand how it works. That's what we call mystery, but it works. <laughs> um, and so we offer to God our time, our effort, our words, and, and we say, okay, I don't know how this works, but please, please let it work inside of me so that your Holy Spirit can, can dwell in me. <clears throat> and in response, how, how, do, how are we sure that it works? Well, look at your life. What happened after? Did, did your life change? Did, did you try to live accordingly? Um, and rem remember the spirit now that who is inside of you? Or do we go out the same that, that we come in? So unfortunately, sometimes we, we do all the things that are asked of us and we say, okay, I prayed, but my life is staying the same. And that's, that's not the goal of the, the proper Christian worship. Or vice versa. We say, you know, I'll just open my heart to God and try to live a good life. And that will make me um, uh, accept it. Well, that's, hey, you're, you're focusing on the spirit, but not on the truth. Um, and some people focus on the truth or tr knowledge, but not the spirit. So that's why in, in our uh, Christian walk, in, in our Orthodox uh, proper worship, we have to try to grow in knowledge and, and wisdom and understanding, and we grow in, in the spiritual life, um, fasting and prayer and and um, and experiencing the presence of God. So, um, in a nutshell, for 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 our goal as as Christians to who who want to go to heaven, we we get a taste of this now, like the Samaritan woman did. She spent a few minutes with the Lord but her life was changed. She heard his words, and they had deep effect on, on her. Um, even she was not afraid of the people anymore. What, remember before she went at the time of the day when there was no one there because she was outcast because of her lifestyle, right? <clears throat> and scripture doesn't say that she married someone else after or she stayed with the one that she was. No, no most likely she kicked him out. <laughs> I said, no, I, my bridegroom is Christ. Um, I'm, I'm not living a holy life right now, um, <clears throat> but I met the I met the Christ, and she went out and served the people and brought them at, to to the best of her ability to to get a taste um, of 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 the true spiritual worship themselves. May the Lord give us a taste also of this that we may live with Him uh, forever in the kingdom and glory be to Him now from today to Then he was blessed.